Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. There are so many things that you can practice on bass, aren't there? And it can get a little bit overwhelming. Most of us know that you've got to practice most days you know, consistently to get better. But I've just got four things, four habits that you can get into. And the more you do this, I think the better you're going to become. First thing is technique. You really need to get your hands working together for speed, accuracy, stamina, strength, stretching, all of that kind of stuff. Now, I've just posted a really good exercise for you and I've got a number of them. So I'll put a link below, I'll make a blog post on this and I'll put a bunch of different exercises for you to check out. You have two types of basic exercises. Those sort of mechanical, dare I say it, boring type ones, okay, which are pretty good for getting the coordination going. They're not very musical sounding, but sure enough, they are there. And again, I'll put the link below to a bunch of ones like this that will get you at least sort of coordinated. But here's one here that I posted recently where you just do an arpeggio on the way up and then you do the sort of underlying scale. Do not worry if you don't understand what any of that means. This is how it goes. I actually did the scale and the arpeggio. You could also do the arpeggio, then the scale. Really doesn't matter. Mixing things up a bit here. But the set of notes doesn't change. You know, here we're on the fourth note. This is a Lydian mode, actually. And an arpeggio, seventh arpeggio. Very good for the fingers. So I'll post, um, I'll put a link to the PDF and you can just learn this and then do different things. Like if I stay here, you can play the scale in thirds like I did there. So that's instead of going lowest to highest note, just go first to third, then go to the second note, third away from that. You carry on that way and that gets the fingers and the brain moving. Let's carry on. There are many, many technical exercises. I love this one because it's actually sounds like music and the the arpeggios that you're going through, you will hear in music. So it's actually working on your ear and your music theory as well, because we did different arpeggios here. A couple of major sevenths, three minor sevenths, a dominant seventh and a minor seven flat five. If you've never heard of those or don't know what those are, you do this exercise and you learn that. So technique. This is to do with your ability to, you know, play. In fact, actually, my next lesson after this one is going to be a lesson on how you can make your own technical bass exercises up, depending on where you, what level you're at and what you want to learn. OK, so make sure you subscribe for that one. That's going to be I'm going to give you all my secrets for that one. But you may have your own technical exercises. You could just use the ones I've given you here, but every day do a little bit of technique to get this feeling a lot sort of easier and a, a lot more natural. OK, make sure you're holding the bass properly, wrist straight, all of that kind of stuff. Next, rhythm and timing. Now, rhythm is very important for bass players, you know, because a lot of the time you're just sort of sticking on one note, playing a simple groove and, and you know, you might have different rhythms. Like I just did a lesson on different time signatures, so 12-8. You've got a different feel to, say, 4-4. Four, four. So rhythm is your understanding of different time signatures and different, you know, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. The part of it is like an intellectual thing of making sure that you know what everything I just said, what that means, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is, is getting that information and working on playing it in time. I would suggest technique is probably the most important thing to learn, especially if you're new or coming back to the bass or intermediate. I would say technique is your means to express yourself, not get frustrated and, and sound really good, okay? But then rhythm, timing, groove, this is for me possibly a close second. I'm gonna show you this exercise now. I'm gonna put the metronome on beats two and four. So 
I'm, instead of going one, two, three, four, I'm feeling it two, three, four. It's like the backbeat of a snare drum, of a drum beat. You'll hear that two and four. And I'm just going to play two notes. I'll do it on D, just pretty randomly. I'm going to play the D and then the fifth away, which is an A. I can either go up to the A or down to the A, but it's just two notes, D and an A. And I'm going to do different rhythms and then I'll explain to you what I'm doing. Now, what I did there was a bunch of different sort of improvising around just the root and that fifth note. Okay, D is the root, the A is the fifth, it's five notes away. Okay, and I just cycled through, I, I was doing it probably um, a lot quicker than I would do it normally. I might stay on one of those rhythms a bit longer. One of the easy ones I did was. Those are eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Playing them to a metronome, you could just have the metronome going on all the beats if you want, try that. By removing one and three, you're re relying on your inner clock a little bit more. If you find this difficult, it should be difficult, okay? This is practice, daily practice, you'll get better at this, I promise you, okay? So, then I did this. That's a dotted quarter followed by an eighth note. It doesn't really matter if you analyze it this way. Like for example, the beginning of Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. John McVie, brilliant bass player. Very simple rhythms, okay? So I just did that. Yeah, maybe stuck in one of those notes. But just keeping it going in time. Then I did some sixteenth notes. Those are where you have four in every beat. One, two, three, four. I left lots of gaps. So I did some sixteenth note stuff, some eighth note stuff, some dotted, you know, eight uh, dotted quarters. And I was just playing around with different rhythms. If you don't know what any of those rhythms are, I've got a video here about common bass rhythms. Okay, but a study of rhythm is essential for you, as is getting those rhythms. And along with your technique, making sure that they're in time. Do that every day, and you're going to be really good for that. Before I tell you the third thing I think you should do every day, let's address this question. How long do I practice for? I had an Instagram message today from a doctor, and he doesn't have that much time. I had another one from a guy who's a teacher, and he's got four kids. He doesn't have that much time. Then I had another email from, from a lady from the States who was practicing four hours most days. Amazing. We all have different lives. We have different lifestyles, different jobs. How you're going to practice is going to be very different to me. I don't know what your time availability is, but you can do this with, I mean, even with five minutes a day, you really could. You're not, you're not going to improve as much if you only do five minutes, but it's going to be better than nothing. You could do the, you know, you could just do the first exercise, just one minute up and down. You could just do one minute of the rhythm thing. And then this is the third thing is to listen. So with practice, just you have to adapt it to your own lifestyle, but keep it as consistent as you can and stick to it. Hopefully five minutes turns into 10, which might turn into 15, hopefully. But you are the only person that knows how much time you have. Try and keep it consistent. The third thing I'm going to ask you or suggest to you that's a really good thing to practice is to listen to music, your favorite bass lines, but with a slightly different ear. Listen and figure out. Now, I don't know if this is something you do anyway. It might not be, you know, to be able to listen to some music and figure out the bass line. But you learn so much by doing that. Now, I'm proposing that you listen, figure out, and then try and analyze what is going on. So, for example, um, yeah, yesterday I was listening to Hegira by Joni Mitchell with the great Jaco Pastorius on bass. And I love that song, but curiously, I've never really figured it out. But the beginning bit, you know, so it's a, like, it's a C-sharp minor chord. And there's that lovely little bit there. Dun, 
There's that lovely melody. And this is what I did. So I put the beginning on. If you have to pause just after the little, as an example, do. If you have to go around it a few times, do that, okay? Watch my lessons because I tell you what this stuff means. And, and then you can start to sort of analyze a little bit. So the first chord. You've got a C sharp minor, okay? And, and Jacko starts on the third, the flat third of the chord. And you've got a major seventh pattern. I've seen this pattern a million times before. Now I know that on any minor chord, I can go up a flat third and play that. You know, I can maybe do a bass line. Up. See, I know that works now. This is what I mean by listen. I mean, I mean a little bit more deeply than maybe you you might now. You you listen and you analyze and you figure out. Like I say, this does involve a little bit of theory knowledge. That's why I want you to to watch my channel, subscribe. I do loads of lessons on this, and I can point you in the direction that you need to be able to understand what all this means. But now that I've learned that, I now know. I can do this move. Also makes it easier to learn because I know patterns, okay? Then it goes to this chord. And I can I can see, I can, you know, Jacko was probably just making this up kind of on the spot, but if you analyze, you can, you can help your own playing. We're on a D. And you know, these are patterns, fifth to the sixth. That's a major third, right? So again, I know that if I'm doing any kind of melodic or solo lines, I can avoid the root, like J Jacko's avoiding the root here. You see, so I'm really getting a lot from listening, figuring out and analyzing in this sort of manner. That's what I'd like you to do as well. You know, if you just get a soul bass line, uh, knock on wood, how many times do you have to do that before you realize root? Six, major six. Five, third, exactly that same Jacko pattern actually here. A light bulb goes off, you realize that this pattern is being used, that's used all the time in Sol. And th if you do this every day, it's really, really going to help you. I'm not sure if I can, if I've done this idea justice in the last couple of minutes of me mentioning this. This is, but this is huge. Figuring out songs bass lines by ear, and then sort of reverse engineering them, analyzing them, working out why they work and why they sound brilliant. If it's going to take you a little bit of time to actually hear the bass in the first place, to extract the notes, just every day you'll get a little bit better. I really promise you, you will. So try your best to do that. So you've worked on your technique, you've done some rhythm timings of work, you've listened to a bass line and done the hard work, and it is hard work of figuring out and sort of working out why it's good. Then, you know, the, the fourth thing you can do is just to play, you know, noodle around a bit on the bass. I think this is the thing probably most people do when they pick up the bass. They pick up their bass and they just play around, maybe perhaps a little bit unfocused and probably spending too much of their practice time doing this. This is really important to have fun, to explore, to just love playing the bass in that way. I think that you perhaps won't improve as much if you focus too much on this side of playing. The, the leaps for you are going to come from when you tackle the things that you're not so good at, the uncomfortable things, maybe like music theory and how to apply it, because it's hard and it doesn't sound great initially. Okay, So this aspect of playing, this could be where you just play along to, to your favourite bass line or you, you're reading tab or you know, whatever it is, this could be a million and one different things. It could be just. Taking a little simple groove and playing around and slap. It could be anything, OK, but this sort of fun exploratory improvisation, that's what you're working on as well. You know, perhaps take the beginning idea. That was your arpeggio and your scale, you remember that? So you might take that and then the fourth goes to the... Turn that 
into music, compose, write, you know, come up with your own thing. I really think that is a very good way of becoming creative, you know, really pushing your creative juices a little bit, but you also will hear some of the stuff that you're making up in actual bass lines. So you come around the other way, you can actually improve your ear by just playing and making stuff up. There are lots of things you can do to practice playing the bass, loads I haven't mentioned, but I think technique, rhythm, creativity, and then just listening to the greatest bass lines ever. You're going to, to learn from the very source what great bass playing is all about, okay? Plus you're going to learn stuff that you like. Obviously, if you're just a beginner or listening is quite difficult and you don't quite know what you're doing with it, that could lead to frustration. You've got YouTube, you've got channels like mine that help you with individual songs, but above all, I think it's about uh, educating yourself, working on your craft, becoming better at, at using your ear, becoming better every day at being able to teach yourself. And, and that really helps. The, my biggest leaps have come from listening to the best bass players or the ones that, you know I loved and just figuring out what they're doing. And if you do that every day, I promise you, you will get better. I'm sure you do have some questions based on this because even that's a relatively short video, I hope this can change your bass life it really can if you practice if you practice the right things and you get better at the right things you know if you get your technique better your rhythm and your ear you're just going to be amazing in like a year's time everything will completely transform that's what i want for you okay but if you do have questions and i'm sure you do just let me know and i'll answer them do follow-up videos and let's see where we get thanks for watching please do subscribe and i'll see you next time